Greetings. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. A few words of introduction before we start. Today we will be following the service in our Methodist worship book. And I'd like to introduce you to my husband, Alistair, better known as Ali, who is a minister in the Trent Valley Circuit. And he'll be assisting with today's service so that there are different voices to help with the responses, which I invite you to say as well. It's the usual format. Please say the words in dark time. There'll be no sermon, but I invite you to reflect on the words from our readings from scripture. During the service, we will be ashing. We have used ash from our neighbour's wood burning stove mixed with a little oil, but anything that is burnt will suffice. Some people like to burn their palm crosses from last year. But be warned, these are very difficult to light without an accelerant. Please make your own if you need to. In non-pandemic times, this service would usually conclude with Holy Communion. But we will finish with the love feast. So if you could have a biscuit or a piece of cake and something to drink, that would be good. So after all those announcements, let's start. Our worship. Grace and peace to you, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing together, or listen if you prefer, the hymn, Lord, you sometimes speak in me.
sisters and brothers in Christ. Since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion, death and resurrection. It is the custom of the church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and self-denial. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those being prepared for baptism at Easter and by those seeking restoration to the church fellowship. In the course of time, all Christians were invited to keep these days carefully, to take to heart the call to repentance, to receive the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so to grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. In the name of Christ, therefore, I invite you to observe this holy season of Lent by prayer, self-denial and charitable giving, by self-examination and repentance, and by reading and meditating on God's word. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your King. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts, so that when we turn to you and confess our sins, we may receive your full and perfect forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reading from Isaiah chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet, announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practised righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a, with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, 
and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of street living. Let's say together Psalm 51. Have, Have mercy, mercy on me, O God, God, in your constant love, in the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences, wash away all my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again, and strengthen me with a willing spirit. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6. Hear the Gospel of Christ. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they might be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that the alms may be done in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not like, be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they might be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Hear the Ten Commandments which God has given to his people. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not idolise anything God has made. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy on us. And turn our hearts to delight in your law. Honour your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false evidence. You shall not set your heart on anything that is your neighbour's. Lord, have mercy on us. And, and turn, turn our, our hearts to, to delight, delight in your law. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, in communion with all the saints, that we have sinned through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, in what we have done and in what we have failed. We have not loved you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not loved one another as Christ has loved us. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives, our self-indulgence and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We confess our preoccupation with worldly goods and comforts and our envy of others. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We confess our blindness to human need and suffering, our indifference to injustice and cruelty our misuse and pollution of creation and our lack of concern for the generations to come. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. We confess our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, you created us from the dust of the earth. Let these ashes be for us a sign of our repentance and a symbol of our mortality. May we always remember that by your grace alone we are given eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ, I invite you to make on your forehead the sign of a cross. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and keep us in life eternal. Before our love feast, we will sing a hymn, We Turn to God When We Are Sorely Pressed. This hymn was written by the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was known for his staunch resistance to the Nazi movement and its programmes of euthanasia and genocide. Bonhoeffer wrote this hymn while in prison, accused of a plot to assassinate Hitler. He was later sent to a concentration camp before being hanged in the dying days of the Nazis. Jesus said, 
Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. We take this food as a symbol of the strength that comes from God and remembering that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We eat together. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. We take this water as a symbol of the abundant life, love and friendship shown to us through the example of Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. We drink together. Through faith may God dwell in our hearts in love. And I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you be filled with all the fullness of God, which is far more than we could ever understand. Glory to you, O God, the source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The God of all grace, who has made us to eternal glory in Christ, make us perfect, confirming and strengthening us, and to him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Keep safe. God bless.